favorite dealer. What's up, Terrell? What do you want? How's it going today? As you know, I'm your new Shark Bite Distributors rep, so I'm here to get that spring order going. Oh, great. Just who I want hanging around here now? You. I already put my order in with Trevor online. So, bye-bye. Oh, come on, Terrell. We got all kinds of killer deals going on right now. Just check these out. You're gonna like them. Um, rubber blades. Super safe. Look at that. They flex. You can run your foot over and nothing even happen. Run your hand over anything you want. So what do you say, throw a thousand on the order? I don't think so, Ronnie. That's a horrible idea. Nobody wants rubber blades on their lawnmower. That's probably why that idea never took off. I was hoping maybe you had some wooden blades. You got any wooden blades? Oh, you wanted the wooden blades. <laughs> I should have known. Everybody's buying those. Those things are great, but we're all sold out. They're a huge hit. All right, well, I guess you don't want these, so uh, on the next thing, snake oils. Running a 40% off sale on these babies. You ever try them? No. Yeah, yeah, I never really tried. This one at least, but uh, how about this one? Rub and flush. That's a great one. I know a lot of people use this. Okay, Ronnie, I don't want any of that crap. And you're getting on my last nerve. So why don't you get out of here? Whoa, 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 okay. You're losing them, Ronnie, you're losing them, Ronnie. I got one last product for you. Art supplies. We're also uh, the area's biggest dealer for markers, notepads, paint supplies, all that kind of stuff. I don't need any of that stuff, Ronnie. I get all my art supplies from Pop Goes the Easel. Everybody's going through Pop Goes the Easel now. Now, why don't you get out of here before I call Shark and Trevor and get you fired? Pterodactyl here, and today we're gonna troubleshoot this here Honda GX340 engine that's on this here Wacker generator. So the problem with this is Customer brought it in because it's got some kind of carburetor problem. So he thought. And he went and bought a brand new aftermarket carburetor and put it on there and still had the same issue. So you know what that means? It's not the carburetor. So we're gonna start it off and show you what it's doing. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking right now. It's that low oil shutdown. It's that low oil shutdown, Carol. It's probably the low oil shutdown. Well, it ain't the low oil shutdown. So that's one thing you can look at. Because maybe your problem may be the low oil shutdown. So what you do, if you want to eliminate that is, this yellow wire, because this is a low oil shutdown switch in the motor, pull that yellow wire off. Now you've eliminated that as a problem. So good thing you said that. Good thing I heard y'all. It's a low oil shutdown. It's a low oil shutdown. Because I almost forgot to tell you to disconnect it. All right, so now we're going to start it again. It's going to do the same thing. Now I have to choke on. So I got my car spray ready because I gotta be quick with it. So did you notice when I was spraying that back here, how it smoothed out and ran? So I think the problem is this insulator block. Now Oregon is the only one that makes this aftermarket. I checked stems and I checked rotary and they don't have it. So there's the Oregon number. 
And there's the actual Honda number in case you want to get it from Honda. So we're going to go ahead, pull this carburetor off, pull this insulator off, take a look at it, put this new one on and see if that solves the problem. So we're going to pull off these two 10 millimeter nuts. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt on top here. And then we'll flip our fuel valve and our choke so we could slide this off. And then voila, that comes off. We'll set that over here. And then we're gonna pull this off. We can take this off. And then we're gonna pinch off this fuel line. And then we'll take this fuel line off the carburetor. Kind of stupid, ain't it, to put a fuel shut off right there? Should be on the tank. Now let's slide this off. Disconnect our spring. Get our link out of there. Gasket. Pull our spark plug. So we can pull this off of here. And now we'll slide the insulator block off. Now it looks good. There's no visible cracks, but I had one of these before that was really giving me the flux. And I messed with it and I messed with it and I messed with it like all day one day. And I'm like, you know what? I bet you this thing is warped. Even though it looks perfectly good, it could be warped. So I'm gonna go see if I got this new gasket. And then we'll stick the new one on and see if it works. So here's the gasket number. Honda gasket for here. And just in case you wanted to know what this one was, Sens has got it. I'm sure Oregon's got it. I'm sure Rotary's got it. There's the Honda number. And there's the Stens number. But this is a new gasket that came with that new aftermarket carburetor, so we're gonna use that one over, but I'm sure you probably just wanted the numbers. And then this was one that I had laying loose. So, I'm gonna use this one. So make sure you clean all the gasket material off real good. You know, that's important. Now that's just the little remnants of the original one. So you get a razor blade or a scraper. So it's very important. A lot of times that's the problem. Somebody uh, cleaned the gasket off but didn't clean it off and didn't do a good job. Left a big hunk of gasket on there and there's your vacuum leak. Poor preparation. Then they're all mad. Gotta have patience. There's our new insulator block. See how nice and easy these slide on? Remember when I was doing that MTD? How that wasn't sliding on very good? 
because of the poor quality and workmanship. Now this you gotta kinda tweak a little bit to get it in there, there we go. And it's very important that you hook this up, this little spring. back up that's another thing you want to check for you want to check and make sure you got good flow too you know it may not be your insulator block I'm showing you all these little things you need to check for sometimes it could be blockage in the tank so you want to check for good flow which I already did see that fuel is just pouring out of there that's good flow. Because maybe there's some blockage in that fitting that goes into the fuel tank. And you think it's a carburetor or all these other issues and it's like, no. There's fuel fittings all blocked up because there's a bunch of crap in the tank. A little choke, choke guy back on. Slide this back on. We gotta have our choke in that position. Hook up our valve cover vent tube. Push that on there. Put the nuts on. Evenly tighten them up. Put this little guy in there. All right. Turn our fuel back on. Get this out of here. And hopefully, this will have been the problem. Fuel's on, chokes back, Got our plug wire back on, switches on, choke we still got a problem and it's back there where that manifold is so here got the choke on I'm gonna start it I'm gonna spray back there and then I'm gonna take the choke off so come over here mr. cameraman get over on this side spray in that corner there so there's another problem deeper into that head there might be a crack in the head that we can't see and it's sucking air through there so we're gonna have to dig a little deeper into this one this is a mystery I need to call the lawnmower more detectives so this is a bit of a head scratcher and you guys can run into these problems a lot and it could just be these little subtle differences that could drive you nuts. And again, this was a DIY. The guy was working on it, 
ordered this carburetor and these gaskets and put it on there and then we get it and then we got to kind of figure out what's going on here. So we pulled everything down to here. We pulled the studs and everything out. And we were checking this to see if this was flat. We even made a little sanding tool out of a piece of rubber, like a sanding block, to try to check this. And we even took a feeler gauge, the edge of a feeler gauge as like a straight edge to check this for flatness. So as we're inspecting all these parts, even this organ, insulator plate which says it's supposed to fit this engine we found some differences and this is what we found so here's the original Honda one that we took off because we thought it was bad we're gonna put this gasket aside for now so we stuck this on there and we're like okay you know it fits kind of tight on there you know, around the hole, it's kind of tapered. Then we stuck this Oregon one on there, which when I looked it up said it was for this engine. Now look. Look how it doesn't, it's, it's open, it's wide. See how it's, it's actually getting into this area here. And if you look, this little channel is able to suck air into here. So this, this part really isn't for this 340 even though they said it was. So these were the gaskets that came with it that the customer brought in from that aftermarket carburetor he bought. See how that gasket fits on there? And again, we're not sealing in this area here. And I had some of these gaskets up there too. These must be for a bigger horsepower engine. Now I had this gasket up there in my parts room and I had wrote GX340, which is what we have here. And look. Look how the center hole. Now this hole here is only for access to this channel. But this is what we're looking at. And then when we put the original manifold block back on, so I think this was our problem the wrong gaskets. So, this is what I think would happen. Again, gotta be a lawnmower detective. It's a generator. And if you know anything about generators, they sit a long time between uses, unless you're a construction guy and you're using it daily. Went to use it, went and run, carburetor was all gummed up. Tried to clean the carburetor, he failed. Bought the aftermarket carburetor. Put it on there with the aftermarket gaskets, wrong gaskets. Then it ends up here, driving us nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the studs back in, put new OEM Honda gaskets on there, and then we're gonna see if this thing is gonna run. I'm gonna take this gasket off put the new Honda one on there because this is the original Honda insulator and then I'm also just to double check I'm going to take my little sanding block and kind of rub it across there just to see make sure it's not warped so you can kind of see by doing that if it was warped or not and that looks pretty flat and I'll do it to this side and we're going to put it back together and hopefully this thing will run Got it all back together. Original insulator, original carburetor. All we did was change the gaskets to the gaskets that it's supposed to have. Now let's see if this thing is gonna run like it's supposed to. Hopefully I did, you know, got it figured out.
So now we have to fire it up, fire it up, fire it up! More DIY gone wrong. Now I understand everybody wants to save money. So we go online and we buy these aftermarket parts. So it's not always good to step over dollars or step over, yeah, step over dollars to pick up pennies. Cause that's what we're doing. We're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies here. And another thing we learned. This insulator plate here. This is the Oregon catalog. Here's the part we bought right here. 49, 236. Fits GX 340 and 390. It's a little bit bigger in diameter in the center. Now granted, if we had the correct gasket, it may have worked, I don't know. But it is bigger, because I showed you it was bigger. And then these gaskets were wrong. Again, kind of my fault going off of what the customer brought in. And I'm sure he looked this up. You know, he's got the model. I know this guy, he knows what he's looking for, GX340. But a lot of times when this stuff is listed on the inner screen, you know, it says it fits all this stuff and it doesn't. So you gotta be aware of that. So see, a lot of, a lot of messing around, a lot of wasted time over something as simple as that, and we had to figure it out. We had to sit there and dissect it, match up all the parts, and that's what it was. Just the wrong gaskets. So, follow me on Instagram with your junk generators and stuff that don't run. See, that's another reason. That's another reason you, you all try to contact me. I know you do. You all try to contact me all the time. And I got a problem, Carol. I got a problem with this. I got a problem with that. It's hard for me to fix your stuff over the phone or to try to fix it through emails because I don't know what you did. I don't know what you did to try to fix it. You tried. I, I give you credit for trying, but... The whole idea behind this is I'm trying to teach you how to figure things out. You got to problem solve. You just don't throw parts at it. You got to figure things out like I had to. And that's what you need to do. You need to follow things out. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Carol Fixes All. That's me, the guy that's got to figure things out. Follow me with your junk generators on Facebook and Instagram and your junk Honda engines with your aftermarket parts that don't work. Go to our web store, buy some tarot apparel, support the channel, so I can keep making these videos, keep teaching y'all. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! What a mystery! Oh, we had to figure this one out. It was a head scratcher. But you learned something, didn't you? You learned a lot of valuable stuff. Woo! Head scratcher! Woo! Woo! My head itches because I got fleas. Probably got them from my brother Farrell. All right, all right, I'm going. But before I go, I noticed that you were uh, two grand shy of getting silver status. And you know what happens when you get silver status? You know what you get? Check it out. This awesome silverware set. Look at that, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, so that's it, just two grand more, huh? That's all I need is another two grand? Well, I'm getting sick of you slick, sleazy salesmen coming in here trying to upsell all the time. And I'm not interested in anything else except for that silverware set. So show me again what you got in snake oils. Oh, 
Check it out. You're going to like this one. It's a special one. Gear stabilizer. Stabilizes the gears inside the engine there. Pretty nifty, huh? Here we are on the Isle of Nevis in the Caribbean, and this is our five-star hotel that me and Joe here stayed at. It's good. Well, uh, what's the name of this island? Elvis Island. Elvis Island we're staying on. A hunk of hunk of burning island here. That's right. Hello, everybody. Here we are on the beautiful island of Aruba, or some people call it Aruba. And Joe is out getting us something to eat. I don't see Joe anywhere. Joe! Joe, you're around here! Girl. I got a fish bug. Oh, he's looking at it. He caught us some dinner there. That's a bug there. Now. There's our dinner. We got us a sea bug. 